to the next step of, of uh, teaching reactions. So in this video, we see that I talk about the rebar at the bottom, how it's just practically nothing at all holding on. That you think it's just the husband is what you think is going on here, but it's still it's still the wife. Remember, the wife's the concrete. She's still helping out. It's totally so, because without 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 her, this would fail. What happens is that the uh, yes, it's totally separate. We see that, and I show where it's totally broken apart. It's just two pieces. And I'll be back here somewhere now, a little bit more. It would be back, flapped apart. Right there, there's an image, and there's an even better image. Totally broken apart right here. Besides the re besides the husband hanging on at, at, with, the, at the bottom with the wife. But when I put this down, we see that it's barely connected. There's the wife now. She's kind of contorted there, and I'm going to flatten it out to, to meet each other. But this system doesn't work still. This is, we're going to talk about epoxy now even though I'm loading it right there with the machine and I load it even more let's see if I can get a little bit closer shot than that here the, yes the, the, the husband's holding it together because we know it's broken apart but it's holding it together with the wife still because she's integral with the with the with the steel right but but check this out what happens if I were to wedge this this wife away right here, take away this wedge of concrete? From there's the rebar at the bottom. What if I would just take away a giant wedge of concrete? Well, it would just fold and collapse under or wedge here. Or what happens if I start open, let this grind cycle a few times? It starts opening up and you see that you see the fractures there. And as it grinds and cycles a few times, more and more concrete falls through and falls on the ground as we see in these parking garages. Those are cycles, right? Unless it's rebar jacking it off. It's called rebar rush jacking. It's like the, one of the old terms you use. So I get to enjoy that in, in our videos to make concrete sexy. So it's called rush jacking. So, and then it, what it, what's it do? It jacks off the concrete. Uh-huh. Not kidding you. It, that's what it does. So uh, it's called rush jacking. That's just spalling. So... But right here is where she's touching at this point. So right here, the load, even though it's being pressured here and stretched here, it can't work unless the wife still has some concrete materials left. And this is where we're going to lead into the epoxy part of the video, where epoxy would keep that together, even bring it back, bring it back in, bring it back to life. The therapy would be the epoxy. Let's go ahead. First thing we do is we have to perform a CAT scan of the materials to make sure that they're they're okay. So Bruce will be to do the CAT scan. Check it out, Bruce. Scratch that. Here we go. Come on. Check that. There we go. Check it over here. Check this out, Bruce. 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 There we go. Well, that works for me. You know calico? I have cow cats. Grass is like their catnip. They just love it. They love some grass. My, my cats. Okay, you're gonna eat it till he throws up. Just a lot. Do just like I do, eat it till you throw up. Alright, I got some, a bunch of samples here. And these samples I'm gonna put together to help you first. I'm gonna put together, I have to stack it first, the details. One of the things I showed you is that video where I put the uh, machine on top of the crack. What I haven't worked up to yet is to show you that not only the rebar is in tension, but the concrete, even though it's got a full crack in it, is in compression. That is, so that rebar, this has no reinforcement in it, but the rebar is here. I cracked this by mistake. I wanted to use this as part of my samples for you guys, but the, uh, that's not the that's not the way it turned out to be. Yes, Bruce, hold on. You had your chance to be in a movie. Now you now you uh you went and ate your grass. Now you want to be in a movie. All you actors are the same. All you actors are the same. You just make a little can't make up your mind. Now you want to be in a movie. So that wire was down here, and the wire down here. It can't elongate. So when I lift this up, you see it can't elongate. 
because the wire is holding it together. But what happened when I lift this up? It's not for free. This is a pressure, the compression up here. So look at look at this here. When I pull that apart, look look where it hinges at this point. So you need the concrete, even though you have the rebar, you still need the full. You need contact for this to work. This is where your epoxy ejections would come into play, where you can epoxy it. And now the forces are, would, or even though it's tension down there, you have it equal. Now imagine if I, if you spall this, if you load it, and you start seeing spalling, cracks come up. So I'm going to score this a little bit. So imagine that. So now you're down here on the amount of force that, that are from the rebar there, you're contacting here. If I make, if I don't have this filled in with, say, epoxies, etc., something to close this joint up, why epoxies are are significant in repair and the continuity of the compression and the tension. Remember, the woman is the the, the man is the steel and the woman is the concrete. This marriage, for this marriage to work, they need to be working together all the time. And sometimes they need therapy. And that therapy could be in the form of an epoxy. Once a crack happens in the marriage, you might want to you want to get that marriage back together. You need to the epoxy will help work in that format, and it also puts a bonding connection between the two of them again. Um, it's a high bonding connection. The epoxy is really not that um, very dense we're dancing the concrete around it. So it's, 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 that's up in the air on me on, uh, when I think about that at this time, but the, at this time in the video series. So the, uh, so they can see that if this cycles as cars go on, and if you cycle it, it's not as easy as it looks. As cars cycle it, you get all this crushing and movement like that. The rebar at the bottom wants to stay, but every time you load, say this side or this side, you might get a little more of a hinge action, which is really stressing our reinforcement at the bottom. We don't want that. So the epoxy ejection makes it act as one along with the husband, the rebar. Now she, now they're the marriage is bonded again. The marriage is bonded again. That's why all cracks must be addressed. All cracks must be addressed. You can, you can observe them. Watch them get wider. Some of the reasons they get wider are because of the compression that as you saw, I didn't do anything here, now besides grind it a few times. Now all of a sudden, I don't have my... I've got this stockpile of stone. Trying to get the focus. That stockpile of stone there, that's in the, that's in the joint, stopping it from closing back up. that's got to come out. It's got to come out or at least, you know, be out of, be out of the way. We can get this joint back nice and, nice and tight. Tight as we can get it. Now she's nice and tight. It's a much better looking joint. Now we can put the epoxy into it. Drilling holes, epoxying it. So there is no, so you don't get the flex. So the husband, the husband and the wife can work together, wife being the concrete, the husband being the metal, the steel. And what I showed you was, was how the rebar works at the bottom. Now you see the extra reaction of actually when you load this, it's actually without the husband down there. Look what happens if I pick away the husband at the bottom, get rid of the husband, now I put a load here, it just opens up. So if you're looking at a crack and you see it open like that, we got some no no, re no reinforcement down there, and it's high, or you've got a husband that's uh, you know it's just it's just quit, stripped away inside the concrete there. So looking at this husband, we see that it's it's some we can this this husband has a history. On this side, that we see the husband was really doing a, a great job. On this side, he had his other foot out the back door. He was already taken off. He was already taken off. He's looking at the other woman. So this is a failing husband over on this side. But this side represents as a good husband. Right? And this wife, she's, she's, yeah, she's cracked up. She's, she's losing it. She's losing it. You know, women are temperamental that way. 
they're very brittle. So they're, they're strong women, all right, but they're very brittle. They can't take the slightest of, uh, of stresses, and then they just crack. Oh, yeah, that's going to trigger somebody. So anyway, there's our husband and our wife together here in this, in this piece of concrete. And this time the husband is in the form of a 6 by 6 wire mesh. Right here and here. The plastic was protected from moisture coming up. It didn't quite work because now our husband is starting to deteriorate a little bit. He's breaking down. He's, he's losing it. The wife is holding on though. In this scenario, she's holding on great. She's got some redundancy though because she's got a few husbands to back her up. So she's got some redundancy in her system. So this is a good husband and wife team. The wife that has multiple husbands apparently works better than the wife with a, with a single husband. Oh, wait a minute. There's a single husband right here. And the wife's set up. This is going to be in a future video, but this would be like that 90. Where we see come out of the heads of the columns. If I don't crack it by mistake when I do that video. Where we see it come out of the head of the columns. There's your 90 and... What I referred to in the video is rabbit ears. That'd be the reinforcement going down the column. And then there's your turn in the concrete there. And as the punk shear happens, hunting shear, it folds it down to the rabbit ears or dog ears, whatever you like to think of it as. Uh, flappy ears, you know, hound dog ears, whatever. That's a different form of rebar configuration. We'll get to that. But we've got plenty, I've got plenty of samples. I'm talking about core samples by that, uh, other engineer says they're always cracked up. Well, these are hell of a core samples I have here. And your words are always cracked up, apparently to be false, because that looks beautiful. Always is always. Now this is gonna be interesting. This is the one we're gonna use a post for. And just showing you where we're going with this. I wanna show you more about how it works together, how epoxy helps with the joint connection with the, with the marriage. How the crack sign signifies where the stress in the marriage is. How epoxy can bring it back together. How the therapy of epoxy can bring it back together in a proper format. And it stops the grinding as much, you know. It's like a, it's like a nice little brace between the wife and the husband and all bonded back together. So this should be the epoxy version of it. And hopefully that, that guy that came across good, how, that, how you can understand it. Now if you're evaluating to see if... Uh, What's going on, it would look like spalling at the top. It would look like concrete chipping chipping out. And we'll get to that, but not in this video. But the but I give you an idea. It would be this crushing together again, uh, chip flaking out. You see spalling here. That's the cycles that have, would have done that. And to stop that cycling, um, you don't load it as much, but you do the epoxy repair, let that epoxy mature. Uh, repair mature which is a very fast set stuff you know we're talking hours to the point where it's equal with that now it's a tensile strength between the epoxy and whatever it's bonding against obviously there's, a, there's some beautiful surfaces for it to grab epoxy wood but obviously therein lies the problem too to try to find get the epoxy in there to pressure inject it to get it out to make sure it goes through the full, full uh, surface area and that's when you actually do core samples to see how you do on your epoxy. Okay. I guess if you had a microscope, a scope, you could drill a side hole in it and scope it. Mm, you'd run into the epoxy. Eh, not worth the energy.